Else. Right, thank you, Cinderman, for sending me this article. So there's an article here on Sky Sports where Shelley Finkel has stated that he is refusing to meet Team Anthony Joshua, Barry Hearn to be specific. Now, of course, right away, we all know that Barry Hearn has literally nothing to do with the boxing side. He is more matchroom sport, which would involve the dart, snooker, all that kind of thing. Um, so everything is pretty much not involving Barry Hearn, but Eddie Hearn does like to use his dad Barry because Barry and Shelley Finkel go way back when, okay, way back to before television was invented even, okay, so he has refused to meet him, and this is what Shelley Finkel had to say, I have sent three separate emails to Barry saying that I have no desire to meet with Barry unless I have a real offer for Wilder to meet Joshua. He and I have been in the business long enough to know what the offer would look like. So that is Shelley Finkel's statement. So he's refusing to meet Barry Hearn um, unless he has a real offer. Now, I'm not too sure what he means by a real offer. Is $15 million not a real offer? Serious question. Is $15 million not a real offer? Considering that Wilder is not pay-per-view, he's not a... A cash cow and his highest ever payday up until this Tyson Fury fight of course is 2.1 million dollars he couldn't even sell out the Barclays Center in New York 19,000 capacity only managed to put just over 14,000 in there and a lot of those were giveaways which is a good thing by the way um, I always feel that um, if possible give away as many tickets as you can to charities that kind of thing which is what they've done but still 14,000 is pretty poor especially against a su supposed beast in Luis Ortiz. So 15 million is not a serious offer. How is that even, I mean, what fighter out there would turn down $15 million? Unless you are a real global superstar, you wouldn't, would you? John Jay Wilder is not in the same league as a Floyd Mayweather, a Manny Pacquiao, a Canelo, a Triple G, or a Joshua. Not at all, not even close to it. Any other fighter, any other heavyweight out there would take that deal. Josie Parker took a deal for half that amount. Yet he had one belt. Jontae Wilder has got one belt. So what's the difference? There is no difference. It's one quarter of undisputed. Joshua now has three of the main four belts. Yet he's given Wilder double what he gave Josie Parker which in itself is ridiculous. But, you know what? This is how keen Joshua is to get Wilder in the ring, to offer him $15 million. That's more than what he got to take on Vladimir Klitschko. So quite clearly, Team Wilder are just not interested in Anthony Joshua. They're ducking him again. I mean, I don't know what kind of deal that they're expecting. What do they want, 50-50? Come on now, not 50-50. And I know that, that, that um, this whole fight with Tyson Fury is, um, was it the 1st of December at the Staples Center, I believe? I think that's what I heard um, in Los Angeles, which is fine, but clearly that they've realized that Las Vegas don't really want them because it's not big enough for them um, in Vegas. So they're gonna go with Los Angeles, which is fine. Um, I think Los Angeles is a pretty decent um, boxing city. Um, it put on some pretty good shows there in the past um, and obviously there's a lot of celebrities live in Los Angeles and California and all around that kind of area Hollywood and what have you so of course these people will be quite willing to pay over the odds which I'm presuming that's what they're going to do with the ticket prices they're going to put it over the odds just so that uh, they can make some decent money so clearly I think Wilder's definitely going to make more than 2.1 million to take on Tyson Fury how much more couldn't even tell you maybe he's going to make 20 million 30 million 40 million 50 million Five million, don't know. And it's not ultimately that important, but 15 million, when Wilder has always been saying, it's not about money, why do people keep trying to count my pockets? When people were questioning Wilder, why don't you fight Dylan White? You've got an offer there for $8 million. Who turns down $8 million for a so-called easy fight, as they put it? And Wilder says, well, I don't know why people keep counting my pocket, I'm financially good. I'm secure, I've invested my money well. So when it comes on to Joshua, it's about legacy, it's not about money, but yet he turns down $15 million. And his reasons being because 
There's no date and venue in the contract, yet he signs on two occasions, seven weeks ago, to fight John Taylor, um, to fight Tyson Fury with no date and venue. And yet again, only four or five days ago, he signed again. <laughs> I don't know why he needed to sign again, but he did to have a fight on the 1st of December. So he went all that time and had no date and venue, but yet he couldn't do that against Joshua for undisputed. And then people say, well, he wanted a rematch. Well, again, Joseph Parker didn't get a rematch and Joseph Parker had fought stiffer opposition than Deontay Wilder. Joseph Parker is pay-per-view in his country. He sells out arenas in his country. Deontay Wilder doesn't on, on either occasion. And yes, he's, he needs Tyson Fury to help sell this upcoming fight. Without it, people are just not interested in seeing Deontay Wilder. And that's the facts of it, right? Well, I say facts, it is more opinion, but I'm looking at the facts because people didn't bother turning up to watch him take on Luis Ortiz. So how can Shelley Finkel not even have a meeting with Barry? I think it's something to do with the fact that he doesn't want to look the man in the eye and lie to him. Because he knows that Barry can see through his lies, because that's what he's going to do. He knows fine well 15 million is a quality deal. You've got a date and venue for April 13th, Wembley Stadium. What's the problem? 15 million dollars for undisputed against the cash cow, the heavyweight champion of the world. And Americans like um, um, somebody called Kay, um, I forgot her last name, she said that Anthony Joshua, the real champion. Okay. She worked for the new DAZN. And of course, Michael Buffer said undisputed as well. Yeah, Anthony Joshua is everything that Wilder isn't. As in, he steps up. Only 22 fights, look at the resume. John Tay Wilder, 40 fights, look at the resume. It's a whole world of difference. But yeah, Shelley Finkel says he needs to give us a real contract, a real offer. 15 million, not real enough? Come on now, who's ducking? Deontay Wilder said not so long ago that we're easy to deal with. We can get this deal done, no problem. I'm easy to deal with. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you absolutely kidding me? You don't reply to emails, you don't pick up the phone, you don't do anything. You put in a fake $50 million offer and I'll say fake because when Eddie Hearn and Joshua said, okay, show us the funds, prove it, put it into escrow, you couldn't do it. You wanted a, no, no, you need to agree to the deal first and then we'll show it to you. But yet the 50 million was coming from Frank Warren and BT Sport, knowing full well that Joshua cannot fight on BT Sport. He can fight on any other platform outside the UK, but inside the UK, he is exclusive to Sky Sports unless he loses a purse bid against a mandatory. Dante Wilder is not a mandatory. He's another champion. It's a voluntary. So it has to be a Sky Sports. Shelley Finkel knew that. Wilder may not have known that, but Shelley Finkel sure as hell knew that because he's been negotiating with Tim Joshua before when he helped put together the Vladimir Klitschko fight. So therefore, he knows his 15 million is more than what Joshua got to take on Klitschko. He knows that, but it's not good enough. How is it not good enough? It is good enough, and he knows it's good enough. It's for Undisputed. And we know that all his fans, or a section of his fans, will be running around saying that, yes, yeah, he's absolutely correct. Um, you know, he shouldn't have to negotiate. This is a, a crap contract. Even though these same people have been going for ages saying, we don't care about money. Why, why do AJ fans keep talking about money? We don't care about money, and yet an offer comes in. No, no, Wilder shouldn't do this. Wilder shouldn't do that. Suddenly, they become chartered accountants overnight. It's amazing, that, isn't it? But yet, Joshua doesn't want the fight, even though he sent a contract. All Wilder had to do was put down Deontay Wilder on the contract, and guess what? The fight would be on. It would be on for the end of October. Why is that a problem? And then people say, well, why is it that the fight couldn't happen at Wembley on, well, as in last weekend, like it did with, with Povetkin? And we've covered this one before, but 
just for those who don't seem to really want to listen, it's a case of they needed pay-per-view in the United States of America. Showtime refused to do pay-per-view on that date because it was only a week after Canelo Triple G the rematch. The pay-per-view would have been affected. They didn't want to do it. So the next available one was October. So why is that a problem? Because Pivetkin fighting Joshua at Wembley Stadium on September 22nd, weekend just gone, was not pay-per-view in America, was it? It was on the app, the DAZN app. So again, there's your answer. Team Wilder don't want this fight, people. He d they do not want this fight. And case in point, Ben Davidson, Tyson Fury's trainer, has said that there is a rematch clause for both fighters. Win, lose, or draw, doesn't matter what happens in the first one, there will be a rematch. Even though Frank Warren's saying that um, to Barry Hearn on the radio there, that he should agree to fight Tyson Fury next if Tyson Fury wins. And Barry Hearn is saying, but there's a rematch. And Frank Warren's saying, but you don't know that there's a rematch. Even though he refused to comment if there's a rematch or not. And there's common knowledge. And it's pretty obvious there'll be a rematch. And if there is no rematch, then why would Ben Davidson say that there is for both parties? And if there is no rematch, there's no reason why Frank Warren wouldn't have said there's no rematch. But, but there is one. So in other words, it rules out Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. This is why Shelley Finkel don't want to talk about it. Because he knows this fight cannot happen. It cannot happen. Team Wilder have ducked Anthony Joshua. Team Wilder have ducked Vladimir Klitschko. Team Wilder have ducked Vitaly Klitschko. Team Wilder have ducked Dylan White. Everybody. They, they have ducked so many fights that they should have taken. But instead, they're going to take on Tyson Fury with the lure of, well, it's lineal. Lineal don't mean nothing anymore. He's only lineal because he hasn't had a fight for three years. And that's why... He's taking him on because he sees Tyson Fury as easy work, is what Wilder's always done. Wilder has always, always taken the easier route. Who did he beat to become WBC champion? He waited for Vitaly Klitschko to retire. And then he took on Bermain Stavern, of all people. Bermain Stavern. And he defended it when Shelley Finkel said, only 33, on 33 fights when he won the title, Shelley Finkel says, Deontay Wilder is still a baby. He's still learning. He's a novice. Give him time. He shouldn't be in big fights just yet. But yet Anthony Joshua should be on 22 fights. In fact, Joshua has been since fight number 16. Sorry, 15. Wilder hasn't even cleaned up domestically yet with Adam Kalinowski, Charles Martin, um, Dominic Brazil, uh, Jaron Miller. He hasn't beaten any of these guys yet. Yet he claims to be the best in the world. No, no, no. He's taken on Tyson Fury for the same reason that Tony Bellew wanted to take on Tyson Fury, for the same reason Shannon Briggs wanted to take on Tyson Fury and many others, because they see him as vulnerable right now. That's why Wilder's taking it. And that's why he refused to step up when he was given the golden opportunity to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But he refused to do it. Team Wilder ducked Anthony Joshua. I'm sorry, but they ducked him. No matter how you look at it, and I know people don't like hearing it and people try and make excuses, I've just given you the facts of so many things. But there's a section of Wilder fans that just don't want to believe it. Or, well, to be honest, they, they know it's true. But they just encourage cherry picking. It seems to be the done thing for a lot of Showtime fighters, to be honest. Even Errol Spence is doing it with Terence Crawford. And the fans encourage ducking. Anthony Joshua, 22 fights. 22 fights. But yeah, people weren't even telling Wilder to step up when he won the title at 33 fights. Double standards, people. Double standards. And Shelley Finkel, you've just exposed yourself as not wanting the fight. Who refuses a meeting? Who refuses a meeting to just sit down and talk about it? If you can negotiate everything over internet, over emails, before you have a meeting, what's the point in having a meeting? There's no... It's non-productive, right? So you have a meeting to discuss face-to-face -face exactly what it is that both parties want. But Shelley Finkel is refusing to do it. You guys are not easy to deal with at all. And if I was Joshua, I would just say, screw you guys. 
I don't need it because it's only a matter of time before you lose that title. You've been holding that title hostage for far too long now, far too long. And very, very soon, somebody somewhere is gonna take that belt off you. And then I will give that person a huge payday. Wilder don't deserve it. For beating Tarzan Fury, he deserves it even less because Tarzan Fury is not ready in my opinion. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope Tarzan Fury goes in there and bashes him all over the ring. But I don't think it's gonna happen. And that's the truth of it. Anyway, that's my thoughts. You drop me yours, click that thumbs up and subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.